I am from the city of Irecê in the northeast of Bahia, in the real northeast. And I had a very difficult childhood. Eu me chamo Jeane Porto. My Hoje name is Jeane Porto. In our day, I am a businesswoman. I was a person that I lived there until I was 14 years old. I starved, I went cold, I slept on the floor. I used to go to the butchers and I used to say to the butchers, can you separate it only the fat of the meat that you don't sell and give to me that I can give to my puppies because they are starving. But the butchers knew it. The truth wasn't for the puppies, it was for me and my siblings. Many times I went to leftovers in free markets to get vegetables that nobody wanted. They threw in the trash bin and me and my siblings, we went there and took the rest to feed us. And that's how we went by many years. Until one day my mother got revolted with that situation and said, We were not going to live by the rest of nobody. So she decided we were going to Brasilia, thinking that with the strength of her arm, the situation was going to change. But getting there, the situation did not change much. Because we didn't have study, my parents also did not have any profession. And the situation to see my parents live in the northeast to go to Brasilia with the expectation of a better life. So... I left them by the age of 19, my whole family, and I went to Sao Paulo to live in the house of some relative, thinking that I was going to have a happy life. But here in Sao Paulo, the things was even harder. In three months, I went by six jobs. Nothing worked out for me. And then I met my husband and got together the misery with the miserable. I don't know whom was the most miserable of the two, if it was me or him. So we got married, and after the marriage, I went to live with him in the basement, and I got pregnant of my daughter, and the things got worse, because with a baby, and living in two rooms, just got worse. Because then it was not just us, I had a baby to support. So when I arrived in the church, I arrived exactly in the time of the campaign of Israel, and I really paid attention. Eu cheguei bem na época da fogueira santa. I paid really attention in the testimony that a lady was telling. Obviously, she had many material things, but that was not what took my attention. What took my attention was... She had such a joy on her eyes that you could see that came from inside out. When she started talking about the Holy Spirit, I looked and I said, that's what I want, that's what it's missing in me. And after wonderful seeking in the church, I was frustrated because I did not receive the Holy Spirit, but I wanted so much. That in the day after I decided to make a fasting of 24 hours was wonderful. It was immediately that it's nothing that I can tell you how it was on that day that I received the Holy Spirit. Right there. All the sadness of a very sad childhood. All the frustration of a starving life, of misery, of sadness died right there. I don't know how to explain, but right there was born a warrior. Right there, the fire came inside of me. Right there, God blew his spirit on my nose and there had life. There was a shine on my eyes, the joy, pleasure being a life that before I didn't had. After that, I had the baptism with the Holy Spirit, I became a different person. So, I began to start in faith to faith, and my husband used to ask me to be a hairdresser. And I was like rejecting and saying no, because I thought that I wasn't capable to be a hairdresser. I thought that wasn't to me. I was putting myself like I couldn't do it. But after the baptism with the Holy Spirit, it came that strength, that it came 
the campaign of Israel that I said, oh, now or nothing, oh, God, it's in our life, or oh, he is, that it's not other choice. And then we went to the altar with full power, and we took everything that we had in the house, wash machine, TV, we took all, even my hair. I cut off my hair, and I sewed, I put an envelope, And on the same time, I asked for my job to take me out of the job. I was negotiating, and I thought, if I put everything on the altar, but I'm still going to have the money from the contract, and I can start something new. But God, it's so wonderful that at the end of the contract, I got the money in the same week that was the campaign of Israel. And God said, put all. Stay without nothing, just be depending on me. And then every time that I went to the bank to get the money from the end of the contract, I felt like Abram taking Isaac to be sacrificed. My legs were shaking. I was, my God, what am I going to do with a small kid of two years old, be without nothing? But I want somehow call the attention of God. The only thing that I wanted was to call his attention. I wanted him to notice me. I was there with my legs shaking and I put the bag on the altar. We went up and I know right there God was waiting for us. He received us. He received, he accepted our sacrifice. We didn't have not even where to warm the milk of our daughter of two years old, but we went down so happy. The assurance was so big that there everything was over. The frustration, the very small life was the end right there. And then came the idea to have the beauty salon. And then I thought, I'm going to make this basic school I didn't have money not even to buy a blow dryer, but even that I went with faith because I knew it, that I was going to do it. An assurance that I didn't have. I started to look and look and went to one place and other. And on the same day, God showed me a very small place, 12 meters, 12 square meter. And I told the man, I don't have money. I don't know how I'm going to pay you. I don't have deposit, but right there, I knew that there was going to be my beauty salon. And he said, okay, I feel sorry for you. You're such a hard work. It looks like you've been suffering so much. I'm going to help you. Eu vou alugar para você esse, esse salão. I'm going to rent. And you don't have to pay me the deposit. When you start to make client, you pay me. The first day that I opened the salon, I tried to cut the hair of a client. I cut a piece of her ear and she started bleeding and I was shaking and I was so nervous. And the woman said, hey, lady, everything's going to work fine. You were nervous. That's how it is in the beginning. Don't worry. The important is that my hair is beautiful and I'm going to come back and I'm going to be your client. From there, we start growing Now we have five, five beauty salons. E hoje, eu que comia lixo, né? And today, who used to eat rest of food from the bin that in three months I went by six jobs, nothing would work in my life. Now I give jobs to many people. I live in an apartment that I never imagined that I could enter, not even to clean. Not even to make a cleaning. And now the Holy Spirit just gave me a house on the front of the beach. I travel to anywhere I want. We eat in the best restaurants. I have a blessing marriage. Who that was frustrated on everything. I'm happy in every area in my life. That God that was showing to me, I know him. I have intimacy with him, only me and him. I have a conscience that me and my husband, that we have nothing. All belongs to God. We came with nothing. We are not attached to anything. It's wonderful, it's beautiful to have all, but all belongs to him. We are not attached to nothing. When came and comes the campaign of Israel, 
We wanted to do always something different. We are counting the minutes to do something different because we have a conscience that the work of God has to expand. When I see the project of Canaan that I came from the northeast of misery, I look at that kids and I think, my God, I feel like me being helped. I feel like me being taken care of. Those kids having what to eat. And I thought in my time should have had. When I see the walk of God in Brazil, I thank God. Now my family gonna surrender to God. It's such a wonderful thing like that. And then comes a desire to have more and more to help the work of God. It's not the pastor that asks. It's the desire that it's born inside of you. You have a need to please God. You live for Him. I was dead. I had nothing. I was miserable. What will I need? The biggest treasure that we have. Our biggest dream. It's for Jesus to come that we're going to be able to see him. And he's going to say, that's my beloved daughter. That's my beloved daughter that I love. So that's my biggest dream today. Everything I do it's for this day to become true.